there is one very special thing in that bag. So if you want to find out what it is, stay tuned. Well, hey everybody, welcome to another episode. Thank you for joining me once again. Well, now, I was given recently by a relative whose husband had sadly passed away many years ago a bag of old cameras. She had no further use for them and knew I was interested in the old photography gear, so very kindly decided to pass them on to me. Now, many of the things in this bag, I wasn't, you know, I didn't know what to expect. Many of the things in this bag were relatively mundane sorts of uh, cameras and things from the 50s and 60s, but there is one very special thing in that bag. So if you want to find out what it is, stay tuned. So what have we got in the bag? Well, let's have a look. Here's camera number one. Now then, this is a Bakelite camera. This was from the 1950s. I would guess this is a sort of a consumer camera from the 1950s. And it's just a box camera. There's nothing particularly special about it. It has, a, it takes 620 film and it's called the Bullseye. I think it might be a Kodak. Yes, it is a Kodak Bullseye. And when you look down the viewfinder, it's got this very tiny viewfinder somewhere here. And you look down this viewfinder and it's very, very long and you see a very, very tiny little image right at the end of the tunnel. So I guess that's perhaps partly anyway why it was called the bullseye. Let's just have a quick closer look at this one while we can. So there's the bullseye camera. It's got a very simple leaf shutter which is operated by this control. Let's have some focus please. Thank you. Operated by this control. So that probably fires at around, I don't know, maybe one fiftieth of a second. And then there's a control here for the B setting, which means that you can keep your shutter open to do long exposures and close it again when you think you're just about properly exposed. Here's the side view of the camera. That's actually the lock to take off the back. There's the red window. The little red window was where you would see the number of the shot um, as you wound your film. So you'd have to look at that very carefully as you wound the film. There's the tiny little finder right on, whoops, right on top there. That tiny little finder there is what you look through to uh, give you your um, viewing image. And it really is a very, very long, it's like looking down a very, very long tunnel. There's a handy carry handle on the top of the camera. And I'm sure that many of these cameras were used by people for family shots, holiday shots, things of that sort. And they work reasonably well. It's got a very simple lens. I think it may be a meniscus lens. It certainly a, seems like a glass lens. But yeah, this is a very ordinary consumer camera from the 1950s, but a beautiful example of industrial design, I think, uh, and a very, very interesting little machine as a representative of the cameras that were being used at that time. So what else do we have now in our bag of tricks? Well, let's have a look. What else we have? What else we have is ensconced within this case here. And it's a movie camera. It's a Super 8 movie camera, UMIG movie camera. I think it's UMIG anyway. Yes, it's a UMIG S3 Zoom, no less. And many, many of these 
cameras were used by people who wanted to record moving images. Uh, it's a Super 8 film. It was very, very easy to load. There's the handle, but I don't know how it actually is properly supposed to attach, but that's how it would uh, appear in use. So you'd walk around and shoot whatever you wanted to shoot. Now, a, a cartridge of uh, Super 8 film lasts only around three or four minutes. So it's certainly not like today's video recording when you can just go out with your phone and make uh, a video of very high quality. Super 8 film uses a very, very small film size, eight millimeters, and so it's very, very tiny. And it, was a, it wasn't a great, you know, technical um, Triumph, it was always very grainy, it was rather soft, but it's a nice look and it's appreciated as an interesting aesthetic these days. And there are apps that will actually reproduce Super 8 uh, type um, footage on your phone for you. We'll just have a quick look uh, more closely at this one before we move on. Okay, so this is what you would have used if you wanted to record some home movies in the 1960s, 1970s, these were all the rage. Not that many people used them, actually. The film was rather expensive, it didn't last very long, and it was a, compared to still photography, movie photography in the old days was a rather expensive hobby. So there were you know this was a this was a, a far less common pursuit making movies was a far less common pursuit uh, than still photography was back in the day but there we are what kind of lens does it have let's have a quick look it's got a Umigon zoom 1 to 1.8 so it's got a 1.8 uh, lens on it whether this one will ever be used again to record anything is debatable because I've tried to get the battery chamber open and unfortunately it seems to be stuck and I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's sort of welded stuck with all the residue of leaky old batteries. So we'll have to see what we can do to get this little machine going. But there. There we are, that's a UMIG Super 8. That's not the special thing. But the next thing is the special thing. Okay, let's see what is the next thing that was in this bag. It's a rather heavy thing. And if you know these cameras, you'll probably know it already from the case. Let's take it out if we can. Now this is the special thing. This is a Roliflex and I believe the model is the MX and this is a twin lens reflex camera. Let's take it out of its packaging case. Out you come. So it's a twin lens reflex camera and it's got these beautiful silver covers over the lenses here. This is the taking lens and this is the viewing lens. So to use this camera, you, you have to look down onto the ground glass screen uh, down below. This one looks a little dusty but the image is nice and clear and it's a very 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 beautiful thing this is perhaps the best made camera I've ever encountered it's I might call it an engineer's camera not a camera for engineers as such but a camera for people who really appreciate engineering it reminds me of it's got the kind of qualities of 
what can I say? Um, if you know 1950s Rovers or um, more up to date, 80s or 90s BMWs, uh, vehicles that foregrounded or, or, or that, that took pride in their actual engineering and, and putting it on display and making it very clear. And I think the Roliflex does that. It's just a very, very beautiful machine. Um, let's have a closer look at it. So there is the Roliflex MX and to take the cover off the lenses is quite an easy thing to do. You just lift up this one, twist and this little chrome cover comes off and now we can see the lenses. This one, the taking lens, is a Carl Zeiss Tessar f3.5. There was an f2.8 version of this camera but this one is f3.5 and the t uh, viewing lens, this, so this is the taking lens that actually takes the shot and the viewing lens is a 2.8 75mm. They're both 75mm lenses and the reason that the viewing lens is brighter than the taking lens or has a wider aperture than the taking lens is so that the image that you see on the screen is bright and clear because you don't want to be looking at a very dim uh, image. So if we open the top there's the ground glass screen you're not going to be able to see too much in there at the moment apart from reflections but that's where you look actually and through and compose your shot. On the side we've got the focusing control and if I focus this camera, if I can hold it properly, you will see that the entire front moves in and out in order to focus and there is absolutely no play or slop in that mechanism at all. It is very, very smooth even after all these years. And this camera has been used. It's been kept in good condition for sure, but it has been used and it's been used fairly regularly, uh, I think. There are very few marks or dings upon it. One or two little tiny little uh, points of damage that I noticed. I'm not even sure where they are now. Here's the winding handle. So we flip this out and then we turn it in this direction until it locks and then back in this direction until it locks and we can take our shot. This camera will do double exposures if you want it to. Double exposures are always a little bit of fun. So let's put that away there. And what a beautiful, beautiful machine this is. There's the underneath. It, this, uh, this is the locking lever that makes sure the camera doesn't open while there's film in it. And it's just the most beautiful camera that I think I've ever seen. It is just absolutely stunning. Exposure is set by this dial here and this dial here. Um, on this model, they do work together, but you can, if you push in this little button here, you can move them separately and adjust them separately. However, they are naturally linked together as a sort of an EV exposure uh, mechanism. Now, these cameras are notoriously difficult to load. There's a special sensing device inside and you have to thread the film between two rollers and it's an extremely clever mechanism. As the paper leader comes through, um, it doesn't trigger anything, but as the film comes through the rollers, it senses the thickness, the rollers sense the thickness that the film's coming through. And 
that will tell the camera um, the film's now coming through and the winding lever will lock and you're ready to take your first shot. So there's some pretty advanced mechanical engineering going on here apart from anything else. It's, it's very ingenious for um, the innovations and for the little uh, designs, um, the, the unique design touches that it has that I've not seen on any other camera before. There is a shutter uh, release button here and the lock, here's the lock, it moves with beautiful mechanical precision. There's an X or an M provision for flash on the other side. It did take me a while to learn how to load this camera and the first time I got it wrong and had to do it all again. But I think I've got the hang of it now. I think I've got it loaded up. So I'm going to go out with this camera, shoot some film and do a review just on this camera and the shots that it can take. So I am very, very pleased to have one of these in my collection. It's very different to a 35mm camera. I'm used to 35mm film cameras and using these twin lens reflex cameras, especially the 120 versions, is a, a very different thing, a very different experience. So you do have to get used to it. And I did have to study the uh, instruction manual quite closely to understand how to operate this camera. But once you know, like anything, it's actually really simple and you get used to it and you remember how to do it and it becomes second nature before very long. This camera has a time release here. This little button here will take you an old school kind of selfie and that seems to work quite nicely. And all in all, it seems to be a very nice example uh, in good working order. The only thing, the only fault that I have come across on this camera is that when I put the film in, the film counter, which is this little window here, didn't reset. Uh, it's supposed to reset to zero, but it didn't reset to zero. So I don't know if it will stop when it gets to 12 or if it will just let me wind or how I'll know that I've got to the end of the roll of film. I don't know, but that's the only minor fault that I've found in this camera so far. And I think that really is a very minor fault. It will also take 35 millimeter film. You can shoot 35 millimeter film in this camera if you want to. There's an adjustment inside the back to do that. Unfortunately, I can't show it you because it's loaded up with some of this stuff. This is Lucky brand black and white print film, which expired in 2009. So this is quite old film. Luckily, it's not colour. Colour film does degrade very, very quickly uh, over time. Black and white tends to be more stable. And if you develop it, if you cook it for that little bit longer, then you can get some really nice results out of expired black and white films. So I'd never have a problem shooting expired black and white. So this is going to be the camera that I'm exploring and getting to know for the next week or so. And I think it's going to be a pretty nice uh, adventure. This is real old school photography. It's what all the pros used in, in the day, or a lot of pros used in the day. Fas a fashion photographer, for example, might use one of these. Um, a wedding photographer, might use one of these and it's a very very high quality instrument indeed uh, and I plan to get the most out of it that I can and have the most fun with it that I can which is really the main point. I'll be doing a full review on this camera once I've shot it and developed the images so sit tight stay tuned and that 
episode will be up before very long, or at least as soon as I can do it. So there we are. That is it from me for this week. Three delightful pieces of kit. One nice old Super 8 movie camera. Another very, very, very beautiful old Roliflex. And the bullseye, the Kodak bullseye, the popular favourite for family holiday uh, everyday sort of snapshot snaps. So there we are, we've got the whole family there uh, in front of us. So as I say, that's about it from me for this week. Many thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope it's been entertaining or of some use or of some interest somehow. Thank you very, very much to subscribers. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do chuck us a sub. That would be appreciated. Thank you very much also to patrons and that support is really, really appreciated. So many, many thanks for that. And if you like what this channel is doing and you feel that you too might like to support on Patreon, you can do that over at www.patreon uh, forward slash xenography. I think that's it. I really ought to know that by now. That's it from me, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're not doing anything too difficult, troubling or irksome next week at around this time, please do join me for a spot more scenography. Cheerio all.